Bitcoin is about to collapse within the next couple of years. Have you ever wondered what will happen when Bitcoin finally reaches its maximum supply of 21 million? This topic has sparked endless debates amongst cryptocurrency investors. This is Coinspiracy, and today we'll be answering the question, what happens when the last Bitcoin is mined? You see, Bitcoin is often referred to as digital gold due to its finite supply of 21 million coins, which creates scarcity and value similar to gold. The process of mining new Bitcoin occurs daily, but unlike traditional gold mining, it involves specialized computers that consume a substantial amount of electricity, enough electricity to power an entire nation. This mining process is essential for maintaining the security of the Bitcoin network, as miners verify transactions on the blockchain and receive newly created Bitcoin as a reward. Approximately every four years, the Bitcoin halving takes place, reducing the amount of Bitcoin rewarded to miners by half. This halving event mimics the difficulty of mining gold and has a significant impact on the price of Bitcoin. To this day, there have been three Bitcoin halving events occurring on November 28, 2012, July 9, 2016, and May 11, 2020. The next halving is anticipated to take place in April 2024. The halvings have historically led to dramatic increases in the price of Bitcoin. However, these halvings aren't going to keep happening forever. There will eventually come a day where there is no more Bitcoin left to be mined. A quick Google search might tell you that the last Bitcoin will be mined in the year 2140. However, a closer examination might reveal a different timeline. The 2140 estimate is based on the belief that a Bitcoin halving occurs every four years, which is not entirely correct. When you take a look at the dates for the last three Bitcoin halvings, you notice they are about three years and nine months apart. If we assume this three year and nine month gap continues, the last Bitcoin will likely be mined much sooner than anyone expects. But what does it mean for the future of Bitcoin? Without these mining rewards, miners will have no motivation to continue operating. But hold on a minute, miners still receive compensation in the form of transaction fees. Surely that will be enough to sustain the Bitcoin network, right? Well, it's not that simple. You see, Bitcoin can only process around seven transactions per second. This means that as more people try to use Bitcoin simultaneously, only those who are willing to pay the highest fee will be able to use the blockchain. The higher the fees, the more money miners make. This means that it's very unlikely that Bitcoin is going to become the payment network that is used for microtransactions, like buying a cup of coffee. The transaction fees would be extremely high, making it impractical for everyday use. This is not good news because Bitcoin's goal is to become a currency that we use daily to buy goods and services. So how can Bitcoin become a widely adopted currency if the fees are too high? To address this issue, Bitcoin developers have been working on a solution known as the Lightning Network. The Lightning Network aims to reduce the strain on the Bitcoin blockchain by processing transactions off-chain. It significantly lowers the costs associated with using Bitcoin. However, there's a trade-off. The problem with solutions like the Lightning Network is that they reduce the number of transactions that occur directly on the Bitcoin blockchain. With the Lightning Network, users only need to pay Bitcoin fees when opening and closing a Lightning channel, resulting in fewer transactions being recorded on the main chain. This reduction in on-chain transactions leads to lower transaction fees being generated for miners. Finding the right balance between the needs of miners and users becomes crucial in this context. Users generally prefer lower transaction fees to facilitate everyday transactions. On the other hand, miners strive to maintain profitability, favoring higher transaction fees. Achieving a delicate equilibrium that satisfies both parties is essential for the sustainable functioning of the Bitcoin network. But here's the reality. Most people buying Bitcoin aren't looking to use it as a regular currency. The volatility of Bitcoin makes it impractical for day-to-day -day transactions. Instead, most buyers see Bitcoin as a store of value and investment opportunity, holding onto it with the expectation of selling it for a higher price in the future. This investment mindset stems from the fact that Bitcoin is a scarce asset, meaning its value is anticipated to increase over time. Given this perspective, why would anyone want to spend their Bitcoin? Now, if Bitcoin is not widely used as a currency, it poses a challenge for miners who rely on transaction fees as a source of revenue. Without sufficient transaction fees, the incentive for miners to continue operating diminishes. And if miners abandon the network, the Bitcoin blockchain essentially becomes inactive, losing its ability to process transactions and maintain its integrity. Is that all there is to it? Is Bitcoin destined for collapse? 
Fortunately, there are two potential paths we can take to save Bitcoin from such a fate. One option involves the emergence of smart contract blockchains like Ethereum and Cardano. It's not far-fetched to imagine the entire Bitcoin network migrating to one of these blockchains. In fact, there is already a significant amount of Bitcoin, around 160,000 coins, currently residing on the Ethereum blockchain as an ERC-20 token known as WBTC. This migration is made possible through a process called wrapping, where you lock a cryptocurrency on its native blockchain and mint equivalent tokens on a different blockchain. The popularity of wrapped Bitcoin has grown for two main reasons. Wrapping Bitcoin on smart contract blockchains allows it to be utilized in decentralized finance protocols and offers faster, cheaper transactions compared to using actual Bitcoins. By the time the Bitcoin mining rewards run out, a smart contract blockchain like Cardano would have achieved a high level of decentralization, ensuring robust network security. In the case of Cardano, there is a fully on-chain decentralized application called Aneta BTC, which allows Bitcoin to be directly wrapped on the Cardano blockchain. The key distinction between wrapped Bitcoin on Ethereum and wrapped Bitcoin on Cardano lies in the absence of third-party intermediaries. With WBTC on Ethereum, you must relinquish custody of your Bitcoin to a company like BitGo. The custodian is in full control of your coins. There is a risk that BitGo may not redeem your WBTC, leaving you unable to retrieve your underlying Bitcoin and rendering the wrapped token worthless. On the other hand, with Aneta BTC, users send their Bitcoin to a vault, which is a smart contract that securely stores the Bitcoin and mints Aneta BTC for the connected wallet. When users wish to redeem their Bitcoin, they simply initiate the process by sending their Aneta BTC back to the vault. Once the smart contract successfully confirms receiving Aneta BTC, it releases the Bitcoin back to the user. Bitcoin holders may find the seamless and secure wrapping infrastructure provided by Cardano smart contracts more attractive than wrapping their Bitcoin on a second generation blockchain such as Ethereum, which is prone to hacks and unpredictably high transaction fees. There is indeed one last solution that could be considered. Increasing the supply of Bitcoin. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, wasn't the whole point of Bitcoin to have a fixed supply of 21 million coins? And you're absolutely correct. The current network dictates that there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins. However, it is technically possible to change this limit if there is a consensus among the majority of participants in the Bitcoin ecosystem. When we talk about consensus, it's not just about the agreement of 51% of the miners. It involves all stakeholders, including developers, users and merchants. For any significant change to the Bitcoin network to be implemented, it requires overwhelming support from these groups. However, it's important to note that reaching such a consensus in the Bitcoin ecosystem can be a lengthy and challenging process. This is the reason why Bitcoin does not currently have built-in smart contract capabilities, despite their presence in other blockchain platforms. To illustrate the challenges of governance in the Bitcoin community, consider the story of the block size debate. Some members of the community believe that Bitcoin should increase its block size to accommodate more transactions aligning with their interpretation of Satoshi Nakamoto's vision for Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. However, not everyone agreed with this idea, leading to a fork in the Bitcoin network in 2017. This new blockchain with the larger block size emerged as Bitcoin Cash. While the current stakeholders in the Bitcoin ecosystem are resistant to altering the maximum supply of Bitcoin, it is possible that they may need to reconsider their stance in the future. As the years and decades unfold and the survival of Bitcoin comes into question, they may be compelled to reassess the maximum supply limit. It's worth noting that increasing the maximum supply of Bitcoin would fundamentally change its nature. Bitcoin's value proposition lies in its scarcity and limited supply, which contribute to its store of value characteristics. If the maximum supply were increased, Bitcoin would no longer be a scarce asset, potentially impacting its appeal to investors and holders. While the possibility of Bitcoin's collapse exists, there are viable solutions and alternative pathways to sustain its future. The migration to smart contract blockchains and the development of secure wrapping infrastructure offer promising options to maintain the value and utility of Bitcoin beyond the day mining rewards run out. By embracing these solutions and leveraging the power of decentralized applications, we can ensure the continued success of Bitcoin as a digital store of value and a revolutionary financial instrument. It is doubtful that the Bitcoin network could rely solely on transaction fees to sustain itself, and solutions like the Lightning Network may not fully address this issue. Instead, it seems highly probable that a significant portion of existing Bitcoin will find its way onto smart contract blockchains like Ethereum and Cardano in the next few decades.
The driving force behind this shift lies in incentives. People naturally seek opportunities to earn interest on their assets. The integration of Bitcoin into these platforms will bring much needed liquidity to the decentralized finance space. This transition is not only essential for the survival of Bitcoin, it is also crucial for the growth and success of smart contract blockchains. It represents a mutually advantageous evolution that holds a high likelihood of becoming a reality sooner than we anticipate. So, are you ready to witness the evolution of Bitcoin? Will it survive the test of time or will it collapse under its own weight? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Share and subscribe for more in-depth analysis on the ever-evolving crypto space. Until next time, stay curious.